So when I first got my iPad, I was using it a lot for note taking to guide me along any courses that I was taking for code studies. And then when I got my job at the creative agency, I started to scale back on the amount of usage that I needed to use the iPad for. I wasn't using it as much. And so it just became this really expensive way to watch YouTube and Netflix and just another distraction to my already crazy life. I almost sold my iPad a few months ago, everything included the Apple Pencil, any accessories that I had for way below market value until I came across this video by Sab Yang and it completely changed my idea of how to use an iPad and I'm so thankful that I found this before I sold my iPad because now I use it every single day and I can't wait to share with you guys how I use it, how it's set up and how I use it for the ultimate productivity and studying and anything else that I need to do for content creation. Let's get right into it. So before I had my iPad set up this way, everything was just on one home screen. Nothing was in folders, nothing was organized. It was just thrown on there and I just went into what I needed at the moment. But now you can see everything is super cohesive. And again, I will link the in the description box the video that I watched because this is heavily influenced by that video. So go ahead and check it out. She'll show you how to set all of this up and everything else. But I set up these focus modes. Um, so we have home, we have a study focus mode, we have a Bible study and a content creation. And as you can see, every page has its own theme. It is so beautiful. It's so cohesive. I love this so much. So let's just quickly go through this and then I'll kind of break down everything as we go. So I have a folder on shop or called shop with targeted Amazon because I get everything off targeted Amazon, my kids clothes, anything we need for the household, just anything you can think of. I'm on target and Amazon and that's pretty much it. And I like this page because this is my leisure page. This is when, where I can come and I can do whatever I want. This means I'm not working or studying. This is strictly just for me to enjoy my iPad and my downtime. So in this uh, apps folder, we have settings, reminders, Safari, App Store, FaceTime, Gmail, Kindle, Pinterest, Freeform and GoodNotes. I use Freeform a lot for wireframing and just doing notes. Like I literally mapped out my Animal Crossing uh, island in free form. I just draw in there and just write down my villagers that I want. You guys know I use good notes for all of my note taking and I actually have my study journal in there which I'll show you when we get to the study page. So there's that. So then as we go to these um, widgets here on the side some of them have things behind them. So if we do this one it has my calendar. I don't think this one has anything, but if we go to this one, it has like my planner, basically my favorites in my Notion, which if you didn't see that video, I went through my whole Notion tour for 2024. I'll link it up in the cards and in the description below, but this has my planner, my content planner, my 2024 whole dashboard, so I can just have easy access to everything. But I also, as you can see, have it here my personal planner, which I'm not gonna click on because there might be some personal plans there. But again, if you wanna see how I set up my Notion and see my personal planner, everything that I have in there, please click and watch that video. Um, it came out right before this one. And then in here, I watch a lot of YouTube because I'm on YouTube, so I love watching YouTube and supporting other uh, YouTubers that I follow. Um, I watch a lot of Netflix, and I've been watching Angel Studios a little bit more because there's a show, I think it's called The Chosen, and basically it gives you the perspective of Jesus and how he lit, He may have lived you know, back when he was living. So it's really like emotional, and I love that show. It just makes me feel good every time I watch it. So I have that app there. And then I have this widget, which is actually, I use color widgets for my widget creations um, but this one has where whatever I was listening to last will be right here and then you can click it and it'll take you right to the music app so that's pretty much all I have um, these widgets don't have anything behind them I just have them for aesthetic purposes all right so let's move on to the study page the study page is also very aesthetic I know my little shortcut up there says work I can't get it to change for some reason it wants to just keep saying work but I'm trying to change it to say study because it was previously my work screen but I switched some things around but it just it's like it was like a default shortcut and it won't let me change it so if you guys know how to do that let me know but anyway this is my study page this is where I come when I want to learn anything about coding or any technical skills anything that I'm studying I have my 
apps that I use frequently here. So of course we have Safari because I use MDN a lot, Stack Overflow, things like that to look up any questions that I may have. Um, also just looking up anything for, you know, Googling purposes as a developer, you know, if you know, you know. So <laughs> GoodNotes is where I host all of my study templates, any notebooks I've created for different things that I'm studying. I will do a whole updated study with me video where I show you guys my updated study tips for learning, like specific to learning how to code. So be looking out for that probably sometime in February. Moving along, I have Anki cards. So you guys know I have been talking about 100 devs and a big thing for Leon Noel, the instructor of that bootcamp for full stack engineers is learning how to learn. And part of that is space repetition and active recall. And basically that just means like when you learn something and you ask questions, when you get the answer, you basically revisit it, you know, at a certain frequency. So that is a whole nother video as well, but Anki cards are basically digital flashcards and you can go in there. Again, I will do a whole study video where I'll break that down, but basically those are my digital flashcards to actively recall what I'm learning every so often, every day, and then, you know, space it out to five days later, to 10 days later, things like that. Here is YouTube. Obviously, YouTube is good for tutorials or anything you need to look up to just learn very quickly. And then Freeform, again, because I use this to wireframe, which again, I will show you guys in the study video. Um, and then I have my tech learning dashboard, which is basically where I host all of my habits, any quick links to any courses that I'm taking, anything that I need reference to quickly, any resources that I've come across. I showed you guys this in my Notion video as well. So if you want to see a full breakdown of that, again, watch that video. And that's pretty much it for my study template. Going into the Bible study focus mode, this might be my favorite color scheme. My favorite colors are pink and green, mostly shades of pink. So this one, I don't know. I just like the different pictures that I chose for this, but obviously you have your scripture up here. Always pray, never lose hope. That is very true. And then I have Safari again, because sometimes when I'm Bible studying, I come across something that I don't completely understand or I want more information on. So obviously Safari is good for that. Um, my Kindle, because there is a book, I think I mentioned this before, but there is a book that I've read that is um, about characters in the Bible. And sometimes I'll go and look at that and just kind of cross-reference and just kind of cross-reference with, with whatever I'm reading in the Bible, if it associates. So I have that there. Again, we have Angel Studios. If I want to take a little break while I'm doing Bible study or I'm in the same, you know, mindset of just being centered around my studies, I will go and watch The Chosen. Um, I have Notion here because I do have a Bible study template, which I've shown you also in another video. Um, I showed you that breakdown as well. So that's just to get quick access to that. Good notes because I have a Bible study template in there. I haven't been using that a lot lately because I have an actual journal for that now. And then, of course, the Bible because obvious reasons. So that is that uh, focus mode. And then content creation. This is where I come when I want to focus in on content creation. And as you can see, I have my YouTube folder here. I use YouTube Studio to, now you can upload shorts. So I use it to upload shorts. I use it to comment back to you guys. I use it to see my analytics. Anything that I need to do as far as admin work for my YouTube channel, this is where I come. I go into YouTube Studio and then of course YouTube there to watch YouTube videos or to see my previous videos and just kind of like do some studying and research for different videos. And then in the Create folder, we have Canva, Freeform again, Final Cut Pro and Pinterest. So Canva, I usually use, uh, use that to make my thumbnails and sometimes I'll use it to add text graphics that you see in my videos. Anytime I'm like listing out, listing out something or anything like that, I'll do that in Canva. And then Freeform, I just go in there sometimes to actually storyboard and draw out blueprints, different scenes, different B-roll that I wanna uh, get. I'll kind of like do a rough draft because I don't know how to draw, but that is good for quick sketches that I can do that are up to my standards of being able to draw. And then Final Cut Pro. I've only actually used this once on my iPad when I first got the iPad. And that was another big reason I got this iPad was because of Final Cut Pro and it had just released right before I decided to upgrade my iPad from the standard version to the iPad Air. But you can edit on Final Cut Pro on your iPad now. And it's really cool. You can do like handwriting and different things like that. So that is there. And then Pinterest, because I go there to get inspiration for different thumbnails or just different aesthetics. And it's just, a really good inspiration hub as I'm sure you know. 
And then my notes, sometimes when I'm out and about and I have an idea for a video or I have things that I don't wanna forget very easily, I'll just jot it down in a note really quickly because usually I can access that faster than one of my, con my content creator Notion template, but it's there. So, and then photos because I take screenshots or I need it to you know, access different things for the video. Safari again, for obvious reasons. And then my content planner, which again, I also went over this whole breakdown in the video of my notion but it's there so that i can have easy access to the content creation and that is it this is what is on my ipad as you can see like i said i have these four different focus modes which i absolutely love how they came out and if we go back to the home one each of these have their own lock screen as well so you can add this sidebar this is new in ios 17 and you can literally like long press the screen and Let's see, you can long press the screen, customize it, select lock, lock screen, and then you can go in and like edit all of these. So your widgets will come up and you can literally customize the colors, the widgets that are there. You can customize the way that this time looks, the colors, the fonts, it's so much that you can do. And as someone who loves to customize, this is like, everything I need. Like I said, each of those focus modes have their own lock screen. So this is for, I just decided to do like different color things. So my leisure screen is blue. This is the Bible study, which is pink. My study, like technical studies is green. And then this one is the content creation one, which I don't know why it was coming up pink like that, but it is like a white beige kind of neutral color. And then you swipe up and it matches the aesthetic. So now let's talk iPad specs and accessories. So this is the iPad Air fifth generation, 64 gigabyte, because I didn't need a lot in the starlight color. And it is the 10.9 inch. So this is a case by Zugu. And I love this case because it is extremely durable and it has all of these it has all of the different like settings that you can go through to get the different angle that you want. And it's like super strong. Then on the back, it has a pin holder, but you can also take this out and magnetically connect your generation to Apple Pencil so that it can charge and it doesn't fall off. I just usually keep it back here like because I take this to work with me every day now and I'm always afraid that if it's here it'll get knocked off which it has before and then I might lose the pencil. So if I'm traveling with this it is always in this back little slot here and then of course as you already saw I have the second generation Apple Pencil that goes with this version of iPad. Previously I was using the Logitech Folio case which I still highly recommend but I found that I wasn't using it to type as much as I thought I would need to. There's sometimes that I will take this to work and kind of work on things at lunchtime, but I haven't been having to do it as frequently as I thought I would. And so I haven't been using that because the case, it gets really heavy and I'm not the type of person that doesn't walk around with the case on my devices. Like my phone has a phone case on it at all times. I have children, I do not play those games. So. I wanted something that wasn't as heavy and then the version of the Logitech keyboard case that I got, the keyboard does not detach. There is a version that is like that, but I didn't get that one. And so when I wasn't using it, it was folded under and sometimes the buttons would click and it just wasn't ideal for me. So I went ahead and got this foldable keyboard case off Amazon. So you literally can just unfold it and you have yourself a full keyboard and it's super lightweight, it's super, you know, portable. And it also has this trackpad, which you can tap or you can right or left click like a traditional mouse, which also I love because it eliminates the use of having to bring another device, which is an external mouse. So I love this thing. And you can connect up to three devices. So I could have my iPad, my phone, and my laptop connected and just hit the short keys to go between each device, depending on which one I wanna focus on at the moment. Highly, highly recommend these. I'll have a link to this in the description box below. There's so many different ones that you can choose from. This also, I think, came in silver or like a white color maybe. Maybe it was black, I don't know, but I really like this color. And I will link it in the description below if you are interested in that as an accessory. So that is gonna do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I love watching videos like this and I'm so happy that I have my iPad set up in this way because I really do feel like it has helped so much with my productivity and just being organized and feeling like everything was a little bit more put together. So again, everything I mentioned is in the description box below. And the video of Sab Yang going over her setup with her iPad will be down there as well. She does a really amazing job at really breaking down how to set up your focus modes, set up all the shortcuts. So 
be sure to check out her video. That's where I got the inspiration to set mine up like this. And I'm so happy that I did. I literally found that video right before I was gonna sell it. And I'm so happy that I didn't because it is such a game changer for my day to day. So let me know if you have any questions in the description below. And I thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful, be sure to like the video, share it with someone who you think will love it as well. Thank you so much. I will see you in my next video. I love you guys. Bye.